All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Tor Venisland, the UN Special Coordinator for the Middle East Peace Process, told the Security Council this morning that in recent weeks, we have seen an alarming spike in violence across the northern and central occupied West Bank, leading to numerous Palestinian and Israeli casualties. The mounting violence, he said, is taking place against the backdrop of deeply worrying settlement-related developments that altered the already fragile dynamics on the ground, as well as a worrying deterioration in relations between Israel and the Palestinian Authority. Mr. Venisland said that he remains deeply troubled by the relentless expansion of Israeli settlements in the occupied West Bank, including East Jerusalem, that fuels violence and is impeding access by Palestinians to their land and resources, reshaping the geography of the occupied West Bank and threatening the viability of a future Palestinian state. He noted that Israeli settlements constitute a flagrant violation of United Nations resolutions and international law. He called on the government of Israel to seize the advancement of all settlement activity immediately. We expect more from the Secretary General on this later today. Today in China, the Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed met with the Inner Mongolia provincial leaders. She acknowledged the regional efforts on climate action and long-term investments in afforestation. This was followed by a visit to the world's first zero-carbon industrial park in Ordos. Ms. Mohammed also visited an afforestation project and sand drift prevention projects in Kubuki, which also hosts China's largest single-stage solar farm. The Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs says that halfway into 2023, it has only received 20% of the $54.8 billion in needs to help people in need around the world. At the end of last year, the number of people who needed aid was a record 349 million, but that number has climbed to 362 million. That means that one in 22 people globally now requires assistance. With needs growing exponentially, funding is struggling to keep pace. OCHA also warns that unequal funding across emergencies and key sectors uh, have challenged our ability to respond to surging needs. Current underfunded crises include Myanmar, Burkina Faso, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Venezuela, Somalia, and Afghanistan. These funding gaps have real consequences on millions of people, and we encourage donors to continue to contribute generously to the humanitarian response plans. Turning to Ukraine, we, along with our partners, are continuing to help people impacted by the destruction of the Kakovka Dam. Since June 6, the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs organized 15 interagency convoys which delivered more than 60 truckloads of vital supplies to over 20 villages and towns of the Dnipro and Kherson regions, including Kherson City. The latest interagency convoy today reached two villages in the Dnipro region, carrying water, food, hygiene kits, and medical supplies to nearly 2,000 civilians in the area. These villages, which are less than 10 kilometers from the front line, have been completely cut off from water since the 7th of June, affecting more than 10,000 civilians. Yesterday, another interagency convoy delivered aid for an, around 1,500 civilians in the town of Antonivka, which is approximately two and a half kilometers from the front line in the Kherson region. Last Friday, humanitarian workers reached two other villages, also in Kherson, with, another, uh, with enough aid for nearly 2,000 people. These interagency frontline convoys are in addition to the aid that UN agencies and non-governmental organizations are providing. Overall, humanitarian workers have distributed more than 2.6 million liters of drinking water and over 180,000 rations of food. Cash assistance has reached more than 11,000 people, with another 35,000 people set to receive cash in the coming days. Turning to Afghanistan, a United Nations report released today shows that improvised explosive devices remain a significant concern in Afghanistan, despite an overall decline in civilian casualties since the Taliban takeover, characterized by a rise in attacks on places of worship and against the minority Hazra community. The report by the UN Assistance Mission in Afghanistan notes that of the 3,774 civilian casualties between the 15th of August 2021 and the 30th of May 2023, three quarters were caused by indiscriminate improvised explosive devices in populated areas, including places of worship, schools, and markets. According to the report, the majority of civilian casualties resulted from attacks carried out by the self-identified Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant, Khorasan province. The report recommends that the de facto authorities implement protection measures with a view to preventing the recurrence of similar attacks, 
taking into account the specific risks faced in places of worship and educational facilities and within Hazra Shia communities. The annual report on children and con armed conflict was published this morning, and you heard Virginia Gamba's briefing on the report just a short while ago. As she mentioned in her briefing in 2022, children continue to be disproportionately affected by armed conflict. The United Nations verified over 27,000 grave violations, impacting close to 19,000 boys and girls in 24 country situations and one regional monitoring arrangement that covers the Lake Chad Basin. The full report is available online. Today is Micro, Small, and Medium-Sized Enterprises Day. The theme of this year's day focuses on women and young people's entrepreneurship and resilient supply chains. In his message for the day, the Secretary General says that these businesses play a big role in economies, communities, and livelihoods around the world. However, enterprises owned by young people and women are some of the most at risk. And on a programming note, tomorrow will be, uh, will be the Eid holiday, and the UN will be closed. Uh, so Eid Mubarak to all who observe. We will resume our regular schedule on Thursday, and we hope to have our guest, UNICEF Executive Director Catherine Russell, here to brief on her recent trip to Haiti. That's it from me. Yeah, James. Um, following up on um, the theme of the day in the Security Council, Israel-Palestine, um, comments from the Security Minister of Israel, the National Security Minister, Ben Gavir. Let me read the quote. In this government, we've killed 120 Palestinians in the last six months, and there will be more to come. The public expects us to do more, and we have the capacity to meet those expectations. What is the Secretary General's reaction to those comments that seem to have genocidal overturns? I mean, you know, we need to kill more people, is what he's saying. We are always and consistently against any uh, rhetoric from any side that uh, threatens uh, the lives or the existence of other people. And so that is in keeping with this. We, we call on all uh, to discourage uh, this, uh, this uh, sort of language, particularly coming from cabinet officials. Uh, yes, Abdul Hamid. Thank you, Farhan. I want to follow up with, with the, the report of Ms. Gamba. I want to ask you if, who decides to put on the list those countries or organizations or groups to be listed on the blacklist? Is Ms. Gamba or the Secretary General? It's the Secretary General. It's his list, yeah. and he has final decisions on all of the people, uh, all of the entities that okay. are included. A follow up. Now, her defense on not enlisting Israel was not convincing. She did not give us really good reasons. Can the SG really give us a, a full answer why Israel was not listed when it is the highest uh, number of violations were committed by Israel? That's one. Well, uh, well, and why well, well, Kashmir also, I want to ask about, why Kashmir was not included? Are the people in Kashmir under uh, Indian occupation are living in, in a very beautiful uh, and uh, their rights are protected? Uh, well, so. there, there's language in the report on both the Israel-Palestine situation and on uh, the situation regarding Kashmir. So I would urge you to read the language of the report, which takes you through all of that. Uh, I, I don't agree that uh, what uh, Ms. Gambo said was not uh, persuasive. The basic point is that this report is a mechanism to get governments and other parties to improve the records about how uh, children are treated. And during the reporting period, strictly during the reporting period, which is the year 2022, the number of violations committed by the government of Israel went down and there were measures, concrete measures put in place uh, uh, for the protection of children. And so keeping them off the list was a reflection of that improvement, both in terms of the engagement and in terms of the results. If since then things worsen again, that can be reflected, but that, that is for another year and another report. Uh, Deji? Turkish Foreign Ministry just uh, announced that um, the Secretary General had a, a phone call conversation with the Foreign Minister of Turkey. Uh, can, you, can you give us more details on this phone call? Because as we know, uh, they were talking about the Black Sea Initiative, as well as the humanitarian issue in Syria. Uh, 
I, I don't have a readout to give you. I'll, I'll see whether we can get something. But you can confirm uh, it, there's it's, a it's, conversation. Uh, the Secretary General, as, as you know, has been concerned about both of those two topics. Uh, you know, that is to say, the situation of uh, uh, at, uh, in terms of cross-border aid in Syria, uh, which is something that uh, uh, the uh, emergency relief coordinator, Martin Griffiths, has been discussing in recent days, including in travel to Syria. Uh, and regarding, uh, regarding uh, the Black Sea uh, Initiative, as you know, the Secretary General is in contact with a number of, uh, of uh, people and a number of parties trying to see what can be done uh, to uh, continue with the implementation, both of the Black Sea Initiative and of uh, the Memorandum of Understanding regarding Russian uh, exports of food and fertilizer. Uh, Edie? Uh, thank you, Farhan. Um, can we get a readout or get to talk to Martin Griffiths about his um, recent efforts? We certainly do know that he was in Syria working on the um, soon-to-be-expired cross-border initiative. And um, also, is there any update on whether he or Rebecca Greenspan plan to uh, go to Moscow? Uh, I don't have any uh, travel by either of them to Moscow to announce. What I can tell you is that Under Secretary General Martin Griffiths was in Damascus yesterday and met with President Bashar al-Assad. They exchanged views on humanitarian assistance in Syria and avenues to engage the wider region around early recovery priorities. Mr. Griffiths also met with Faisal Magdad, the Syrian Minister of Foreign Affairs, to discuss the humanitarian situation in the country. Uh, Pam. Excuse me, but yeah. that, that doesn't really give us any indication of uh, where the... Um, cross-border aid renewal might be going. Is there any chance that we can get to talk to him? Is he going to be back in New York? Uh, I believe he has some travels, but when, when he's back again, we'll, we'll try to put in a request for you. Uh, yeah, Pam. Uh, thank you, Farhan. The UNODC report <coughs> on illicit drugs um, had some pretty out, I mean, uh, surprising uh, statements about 45% surge in illicit drugs, including opiates and fentanyl. Uh, they make some general recommendations, but is there anything the UN can do or will do um, on a global basis on, on this surge? And is there any possibility of a briefing here? Thank you. Uh, well, uh, uh, the, br the relevant briefings tend to be conducted by uh, the UN Office on, uh, on Drugs and Crime, which is not based here. So, so I believe they're, they're doing uh, briefings, including on this uh, report. Uh, there's a, a wealth of information on their website about what can be done. So I would just refer you uh, to the information put out by UNODC uh, over the course of the past day. And any comment by the Secretary General on the report? Uh, well, this is one of the reports uh, that, uh, that uh, he, uh, that he uh, in encourages and supports. Uh, uh, he did have a statement uh, on, uh, you know, on uh, the prevention of drug abuse yesterday, and I'd refer you to what he said there. Uh, yes, Stefano. Thank you, Farhan. Um, from Russian media, we find out that um, the Russian mis mission has urged, urged the UN Secretary General to take action against uh, Washington, against the United States, because the FBI is harassing uh, uh, Russian uh, diplomats here in New York, or the UN diplomats. Now, a, do you want to tell us something about it, what the general? Well, the, the, on, the only thing I'd have to say on that is that we uh, are f you know, frequently in touch with the US as the host country, and we would uh, call on the host country to uh, abide by all of its uh, commitments uh, in terms of uh, how foreign delegations are treated. No, but my question is, does the Secretary General believe that these uh, accusation are real? I mean, is that the FBI? Do you have anything that say that the FBI uh, uh, is, uh, is harassing the, the Russian uh, diplomats? I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't comment on, the, on this. Uh, again, uh, our general practice is simply to make sure that uh, that the, the 
host country abides uh, by its own uh, commitments in terms of how to deal with uh, with other delegations inside the country. Yes. Sorry, uh, let me try to give you something maybe you can comment. Last Sunday, uh, according to Israel Times, uh, Israel police detained three United Nations employees on suspicion of trying to smuggle liquid cocaine into Israel from Jordan, disguised as a component of perfume making kits. Um, just want to know any any opinion uh, any position of this incident from the the UN Secretariat. Yeah, we're we're looking into this, trying to get uh, more information about this. Uh, obviously, it would be these allegations are very serious, and we'll take them very seriously, and we'll see whether uh, whether uh, further investigation is can, warranted. Can you confirm that three UN employees got? Uh, detained by Israeli no, authorities. What, what I can confirm is that we uh, are aware of these reports. We're looking into them for further details, and we'll see whether so, investigation So, so far, uh, you're warranted. not sure whether they're, they're UN staff or not? Uh, I, I don't have anything to say about, uh, about their status at this point. Uh, you know, we're trying to gather information on that. All right, Paulina Kubiak, over to you. Okay. Hang on. Oh, that's a very late hand. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, was there any comment from the Secretary General, or did this subject come up in uh, discussions between Mr. Griffith and, and the President Assad about the uh, very recent strikes uh, in Syria in rebel-held territory that apparently killed several civilians? Uh, actually, yeah, I have something I can tell you on that. One second. Uh, the Secretary General is deeply concerned about reports of airstrikes in northwest Syria and of the civilian casualties they caused. The Secretary General strongly condemns all violence in Syria and urges all parties to respect their obligations under international law, including international humanitarian law. He recalls that civilians and civilian infrastructure must be protected in accordance with international humanitarian law. And with that, I will, I will leave you Hang to on. Paulina Kubiak. I have a question. Bye. What? Farhan. I'm right here. <laughs> you are, you're in my everyone, spot. everyone's forgetting I work here today. Um, sorry, do, do you have any update on the Safa tanker and what's going on with that? Uh, no, uh, we're we're trying to do what we can to uh, uh, begin the process of ship to ship transfer as soon as possible. The ships are in position, and we're just getting some issues sorted out so that we can begin that process. We'll let you know when that starts. Oh, I won't get into those. Um, uh, you know, just just uh, just some technical aspects, but but we're getting those sorted out. Okay, thanks very much. <laughs>